Are you kidding me? Holy cow. Here I come, do an all-day startup, out on the work site all day, 7 a.m. to about 7 p.m., and here I come home, and I look at my community page, and whoa, am I amazed by the amount of performance and, 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 and activity that's going on at the community. I cannot believe you guys. You're, you're awesome. I saw you help about three or four people. You shared some hilarious links and stories, some awesome videos as well, and I also saw like three or four awesome downloads. Great job, guys. I didn't even have to be there. Awesome. That's the best work ever. I have the best community in the world. Welcome to the PCM Tech Help Show. I am your host, Craig Chamberlain, and this is the PCM Tech Talk Live segment. The PCM Tech Talk Live segment is dedicated to you guys, my subscribers. No matter what service you're subscribing to, you can come here, ask any questions you'd like, and we will do our best to answer them to the best of our ability. And by we, I mean me, and I don't have a mouse in my pocket. I'm just letting you know that I will do my best to answer them to the best of my ability, and if I can't, I have an awesome community that we're growing in the background dedicated to helping other people out as well. These guys are fantastic. For those of you who don't know, the community also, as we speak right here in this corner, pre-show hangout. PCMTechHelp.com forward slash community. They've all been hanging out right before the show, and they can all basically do the same Google Hangouts. Talk, discuss, do everything tech, because that's what we're all about here at the Tech Help Show. So I thank you guys for coming out here, and like I said, this is PCM Tech Talk Live, so I will see you in one second. So Apple iPad, okay? We're talking about iPhone. <laughs> oh, let's try that again. Apple iPhone, okay? Apple iPhone has been around for quite some time. And, uh, of course, my iPhone in particular, I have the iPhone 5. And uh, I've actually done some quite extensive uh, research for my own apps so that I can function on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, I'm a high-efficiency guy, so when I talk about apps that will blow your mind, it's mostly productivity apps that will actually make you seamlessly uh, productive. Very, very great and powerful tool, this little device, if you sit down and give, some, give it some time. And we will talk about today, of course, some, some apps, some 40 apps that I have on my phone. I'm just going to do it all at once. People have been asking me to make this video for quite some time, and I just haven't really done it, and I'm finally getting around to doing it so you guys can check out and see what I got on my phone. Now, I do have to apologize in advance. The video quality is not that exceptional. My live stream, unfortunately, goes through Google. Well, it fortunately goes through Google Plus at this moment in time, but unfortunately, it doesn't do any quality better than 360p. So we are limited to what we can see. What I'm going to do here, though, I'm going to monitor it down here in the hopes that I can at least watch what you guys are seeing and essentially be able to show you at least to some level of what exactly I'm looking at, because I'm probably going to have to be pretty close here when I actually go to show you the app. And you probably probably can't see that extremely well, so I'm probably going to have to go in here a little bit and actually go over what it is we're talking about today. And I really do like the iPhone. Now, of course, I'm not an iPhone fanboy, as you guys know if you followed the show before. I do all kinds of stuff on iPhone and Android. This just so happens to be the phone I'm happy with at the moment, but I do like to look into other things here. Now, let's go ahead and get started because I don't have much time. The way this show is structured is I go into the first 10, 15 minutes, and we discuss what the topic is about. That's the 40-plus apps today. Once I'm done with that, I open it up the floor to live question and answer, and you can answer those questions, ask those questions at any point at pcmtechhelp.com forward slash YouTube, and that is where your questions will be read, and then I will do my best to answer them. And it's Thursday. Tomorrow's Friday. Everybody be happy. Be happy. Tomorrow's Friday. Let's do this. Okay, first, I use the calendar app. For those of you who haven't actually looked at the calendar app, the calendar app is, of course, built into the window, uh, the, the phone itself. There we go. Now you can see it. It's built into the actual phone itself right on your iPad. And it's very, very friendly, very user-friendly, as a matter of fact. But it won't give you that many headaches because it synchronizes seamlessly with whatever email service you might have at the time. Calendar app is probably my number one app because I can see the today's date, which is March 7th. We love it. The next app, which is actually the most underused app, is, of course, the Reminders app that's also built into this wonderful, wonderful iPhone. This is probably the most underused because it actually integrates a Siri, so I can do something like this. Hang on. Add host a live show at 9 p.m. Thursday to my to-do list. Okay, 
I can add this to your to-do list and reminders. Awesome. Shall I go ahead? Sure. Awesome. Okay. The reminders the reminders and to-do list is probably one of the most undervalued applications built right into your phone and it's unfortunate because it's extremely powerful. Check it out, the reminders app. It's included on your iPhone. It's definitely something you want to look into. Yes, I'm getting closer. I want you guys to see this. There's my flashlight app. It's awesome. You know what it does? It turns on the flashlight. It's a big button. Boop, 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 boop. We love flashlights. How awesome is that? Here on the next one, of course, is the built-in camera. Who doesn't use that? Then we have maps. Now, this is the notorious Apple Maps, but I got something funny to say about these Apple Maps. The big battle that was going on a few months ago between Apple and Google, Google and Apple, Apple and Google. Well, Google has finally released their own Google Maps. It did about a month ago. You can see it right there, Google Maps. And then you have Apple Maps right next to it. Believe it or not, I found things on Google Maps that aren't on Apple Maps. Of course, that's to be expected. But I've also found things on Apple Maps that, uh-oh, aren't on Google Maps. It does happen, people. I'm telling you. So what do I do? I put them right next to each other. Because you know me? This, like, this summarizes my personality all together right there. I'm an Apple and Google guy. I like the best of both worlds. I'm not picky. Then we move into my calculator app. Now, this is no... Oh, sorry. This is no ordinary run-of-the-mill calculator. This is a scientific calculator. Look how big that number is. I love this calculator because I can turn it sideways. And it becomes a really good calculator. And turn it this way. Turn it this way. Turn it this way. Turn it this way. And this way. And this way. And this way. I'm, is your mind blown yet? I told you I'd blow your mind. Oh, wow. Mind is blown. Very cool. Very cool app. I love that calculator. Just look up calculator and look for that icon. You'll love it. Then check this out, guys. It's Google+. Plus. Who doesn't love Google Plus? Oh, we gotta start it. Google Plus, and then we can go to my community right here, communities. And then if you don't have an iPhone, if you have an iPhone and you're not in my community yet, you're sad. You are a sad panda. I call you a sad panda. Make sure you join the community, pcmtechhelp.com forward slash community, and you can participate in the live discussions and live show right now. Look, I'm right there. I'm live. I can press play and watch myself. Awesome. How egotistic, egotistical can I get? For those of you who are on Twitter, we have the TweetBot. For those of you who don't know what TweetBot is, you don't know Twitter. TweetBot is a great tool that will actually allow you to tweet with ease. I mean, it integrates seamlessly into anything you can imagine right on Twitter. So if I open up TweetBot right here, it'll actually, I don't want to go too much into detail because I don't want you to see the people I'm following. But you have the option to do all your messaging, messaging, all that. Uh, you can integrate it to a third-party app and all kinds of fun stuff as well. TweetBot's probably my number one recommended for Twitter. Then I got YouTube. Of course, that's the official YouTube app, which they've finally done some revisions on, to be honest with you. Some of the stuff about this YouTube app used to be incredibly frustrating. But, hang on, focus. Focus. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it, Cameron. Anyways, the new YouTube app is pretty awesome. I like it. I'm a fan of it. This is really good for business owners. It's called One Receipt. This is a great way to track all of your internet receipts or all of your business receipts. What I do is I use one receipt. I take a photo of my business receipt. It actually takes a scanned copy of that photo, scans over it, and will track them and allow you to tag them for appropriate expensing and also categorization of all of your receipts. Of course, you still want to keep a physical copy of your receipts, but this is a great way to get them organized. Right there, it's called One Receipt. Check it out. Mint.com, for those of you who love to do online banking, Mint.com. Mint.com is basically a centralized banking website that allows you to manage all of your finances from a single centralized location. It'll connect all your bank accounts and things like that and allow you to do all kinds of advanced bankery. That's what we'll call it, bankery. Why not? Let's see how we're doing here. We're probably doing terrible on time, but hey, we're going through this list pretty good. But check out Mint if you haven't seen it yet. Mint is pretty awesome. I like it. I'm a fan. Of course, you have your PayPal app. Very simple. You can send, receive money. You can do transfers. Same with your banking app. Anybody who has a bank has a banking app now. American Express, of course, log me in, allows me to remotely connect to any computer remotely. Check this out. I can literally pull it up and I can select the computer I want to connect to. It's so awesome. There's my office PC. It's not plugged in right now, but I can connect to it instantly from this device and use it. I love it. Log me in. Free. Free stuff. Oh, free for personal use, of course. I have Pro. If you go to Google Drive, this is how I manage all of my online cloud storage. Of course, this cloud storage is synchronized to my database right here on my computer. And I have an external drive here that synchronizes to my cloud. The cloud is then synchronized on the cloud 
and then it's synchronized to my office computer, and then it's also synchronized to my phone. I have everything centralized on Google Drive. How much do I pay for Google Drive a month? 200 gigabytes for $10. And I have, at any given time, access to all of my files right there on my computer. How crazy is that? At any given time, I can go through this. And I can look at all of my files, update them, edit them, and all kinds of fun stuff. Very cool application. Of course, you have the App Store and settings. Those don't really count, do they? Those don't really count as apps, I don't think. I don't think. Of course, we've gone through my first home screen. I hope you guys can take a breath. Let's give ourselves a little, little bit of time, a little breather. Hang on. See, was that fun? That was the first screen. Okay, now we got to go through the second one. My voice is going to be gone by the time you guys are asking me questions. I, 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 I said 40 plus. We got to get through 40 plus, so let's do this. Okay, we've got Flipbook. Have you guys seen Flipbook? If you haven't seen Flipbook, it's right there. Flipbook is an awesome way to get your news. Probably one of the best. Hang on, I'm having some trouble here. Flipbook is cool because it'll actually allow you to go through and customize the type of stories you want to look at, and then it's got this cool little animation when you're going between your pages. Hang on, it's loading, loading, loading. Loading. It doesn't like that I'm doing my live stream while I'm doing this, apparently. So anyways, there's my cover stories, and I can flip through it. See, here's all my other categories. I can connect my social networks. I can actually flip through them. And it's a very awesome way to get your news. Flipbook's a cool, cool app. It's even better on the iPad. I have the traditional Twitter app for when I need to check out my interactions. I've got a Favstar app. If you're on Twitter and you're not on Favstar, you're missing out. Favstar is essentially like a local little... No, it's a pretty big community of people who connect with each other based on starring each other's content. And the cooler the content, the more stars it gets and the more you become a fav star. I know it sounds cheesy, but the more you go up on the list and the more attention you get. It's an awesome social and uh, you'd be amazed at how hilarious some of these people's tweets are. They are hysterical, absolutely hysterical. Of course, I have the infamous Facebook. Oh, no. Got my Facebook pages app so I can monitor my Facebook page. I got Instagram because I like to use that, or I did at the time. I haven't used it very much. Pinterest for doing any kind of pinning. Flickstacker will actually allow me to connect to my and download my Flickr images. I also have Hootsuite, which is another application for managing social networks. Hootsuite I'm not a big fan of as much as I used to be, but it's also a great tool to connect all your networks together. Whoa, lost my page there. Uh, unlock, unlock. It's inverted on my screen. Then we have right here Buffer App. If you have not used Buffer App, you are missing out. If you are doing any kind of social media or content generation, Buffer App is the awesomest app on the planet. I did say awesomest. That's how sad that is. But Buffer App will let you actually create apps and buffer them into the future or create posts for your social networks and buffer them into the future so you can actually create a whole bunch of funny posts or ideas and then schedule them out over long periods of time. For a person who's very time constrained, such as myself, it's very difficult to keep up with social media. And so you have an app where you can actually create your engaging content, but you don't have to always post it immediately. So if you come up with a bunch of good ideas at once, you can just add them to this buffer app, one after another after another, and then they'll auto post at later times. That way you're not posting all your content at once and flooding people's timelines. Quick AdSense will let you actually see how much ad revenue you've gained from your AdSense account. Now this wasn't a free app, but I paid for it like two bucks I think it was, and it's been an awesome app to actually keep track of and look at all my statistics for all of the revenue I've made on AdSense. So that's another great tool. And I do a similar thing for this one right here. It's called Quick Analytics. Hang on, let's get this, get this here. There we go. Quick Analytics. See that? Quick Analytics is another one. It does Google Analytics, and it'll allow you to actually track and look at all of your analytics statistics. Of course, I have eBay. Everybody knows eBay. Quick Scan. Quick Scan's an awesome shopping app. For those of you who don't know what Quick Scan is, I can essentially take like this product. I still have this box from an external drive I bought, and I can pull up Quick Scan. Let's say you're at the store and you want to say, "How much can I get this online for?" So there's Scan. This says Scan QR barcode. Hang on, let me make sure you guys can see that real quick before it. Come on, focus. You can focus. You can do it, camera. There you are. It's right there in the middle. It says scan QR and barcode, okay? So I can press this button, and I can look for the barcode on here, and I can go scan. And then it scans it, and then I can actually look at it right there. Not only do I see pricing, hang on, let it focus. You guys can go grab a coffee if you'd like while you wait. <laughs> you can do it. There it is. Okay. It actually scans it and it gives you reviews. It gives you prices. It gives you all kinds of information on that particular device. 
And it's an essential tool because it also shows you what online results you can get. And it's awesome for actually tracking anything that you might be wanting to purchase. Definitely worth the $1 I paid for the extra QR code support, but that's an awesome product as well. I have the Blizzard Authenticator. I don't even know if that counts as a mind-blowing app, but this app will actually let you authenticate as two-step verification on all of your Blizzard accounts. Utilities is just my notebook. I still like my notebook and voice search. And here's YouTube Capture. You guys may have seen my YouTube Capture app recently, and uh, that didn't work out too well. It was kind of bizarre when I did the YouTube Capture video <laughs> because <laughs> it ended up being really trippy for some reason. It was like really psychological psychological, uh, mind-boggling craziness because it's like had the whole background moving behind me and it was all creepy. Hey, we made it through the second window and we're in 15 minutes after. We're not doing too bad because now we're in the entertainment section. The entertainment section I'm going to zing through here really quick and then we're going to go straight into the tools. So I hope I'm keeping your attention here at least a little bit. There's a lot of stuff to cover because there's tons of apps that are out there and of course we want to talk about what's great and what's awesome. We're having a really, really exciting time, aren't we? Let's do this. So we can get into the question and answer segment. Remember, save your questions. I will I'll actually post them in there. It always helps the show. But questions are answered on first in, first out. Now let's do entertainment, okay? We got movies. Let me show you this. Movies. I got my whole collection of movie apps here. Of course, this is for all my movie management. I got Passbook, which allows me to buy tickets. Videos are my internal videos. Netflix is, of course, Netflix. Everybody loves Netflix. Hulu Plus. Uh, DVDP Remote. Actually, DVP Remote's awesome because it'll let you actually control your TV remotely. Uh, like a Roku box and things like that. IMDB, everybody knows Internet Movie Database. Fandango will let you buy tickets online as well. And we have movie trailers by Apple, so you can watch all the latest and greatest movie trailers. And I also have movies by Flickster, which lets me read the Rotten Tomatoes reviews, which I love Rotten Tomatoes reviews. I'm weird about that. Very weird about that. I'm telling you, it's really it's kind of a weird thing. For reading, I have X Comics. You can read comic books online. Who doesn't love that? Eh, we got the Bible, of course, very traditional. Kindle. Everybody loves Kindle. I got tons of books on Amazon Kindle. I can't help it. Then I got this awesome ITS or IBTB for kids. It's a little animated kids books for my kid. She's two, so she loves that stuff. It's interactive. Then we have the, what is that? What is that? Guitar Tuner. That's right. I play guitar. Tab Pro lets me download t guitar tabs, and Tabs is also another guitar tab that's more detailed, things like that. It'll actually do the musical notes as well, so that's something kind of exciting for those of you who play guitar. And then I have poker, I have slots, something about me and gambling. I can't help it. Ironically, these should be next to the Bible app, I think. <laughs> but it's fake, fake money, I'm telling you. It's fake money. Zynga slots is fun. I like that one. We got Zynga poker, we got uh, pro slots, we got slotomania, Zynga slots, and we've got slots journey. I like slots, what can I say? And then we got jetpack joyride, Minecraft, and Ghostbusters. Totally 80s in here, aren't we? What other games we got in here? We got Sudoku, Diner Dash, which is for my wife, not me, I swear, Angry Birds, and Words with Friends. Who doesn't love Words with Friends? Then we got Steam. Everybody loves Steam? Steam's the ultimate online gaming service. That's so I can check their latest daily deals. We also have podcasts, which I use the podcast app all the time to listen to Leo Laporte. I love Leo Laporte. Got music for your music, iTunes for iTunes, Pandora Radio, got to have it, free internet radio. Uh, photo app, of course, Fitbit is for keeping track of your calories. If you're on a diet or your exercise plan, check out Fitbit. My wife used it. She loved it. We also have uh, Xbox Glass. Probably can't see that. Xbox Glass actually lets you control your Xbox 360 right from your phone and relaxation sounds. This one's actually called RelaxM.P. We haven't fun yet. Whew. Entertainment. We shot through that section. Lightning speed. That's good because there's only one section left, and I'm just about to hit my 20-minute mark. I wanted to make this happen in less than 20 minutes, and I think we're going to actually hit it. Actually going to hit it. Then I'm going to get to your questions, and hopefully still have some breath left to answer them. Boom, let's do this. Adobe Reader. We love Adobe Reader because it reads Adobe files. we got PDF Pro. This is actually a really awesome reader for doing searches and things like that. TurboScan lets you take a photo and scan it as a PDF file. Love that, love that program called TurboScan. Got Backup Assistant, which is actually by uh, Verizon. I never really actually use that. Resistor Calculator for you tech engineer nerds. 
It's awesome. It lets you calculate resistances based on color and stripe type. Tivana, for those of you who love T and Tivana, speedtest.net will let you test your internet speeds wherever you might be standing, whether it be 4G, L, 4T, wait, what is it? 4G LTE or something else a little less fun. GoToMeeting is a great way to connect to meetings remotely. I use Clock, which is, these are all built in. Clock, Stock, Big Compass, Weather App, all those are built in. And then finally, I use the, what is that, what is that? That's a, uh, a high-def radar. I use that all the time because I live in northern Indiana. We get all kinds of crazy weather up here. We got my camping list, which will let me sort out my list for camping. It's a checklist for every time I go out and go camping. And that, my friends, is all of my apps I have on my phone. So now we get to the point of the question and answer segment where I ask you, what apps should it? virus database has been updated. I'm so glad she's protecting me. Now I ask you, what app should I have on my phone that I'm missing? I know this is a Thursday, so I kind of zing through this because I'm in high energy mode today. I got a lot of work done, got up early, and made a lot of things happen. And I'm so excited about you people at the community. I cannot believe how active you guys have been. It's awesome. I absolutely love it. Let's scroll down through here. Hang on. I don't want you guys to look at the back of my head. We had... Uh, photos. We had uh, Tom Prokes made his own tutorials. He's been making them. He's been getting better and better. Tom Prokes is an awesome contributor to the community, uh, as is a lot of people. We have Frank J. Uh, Zbink, I think is how, how it's pronounced. We have, uh, of course, Rusty Evans, Sam Taylor, new addition to the community. Welcome to the community, Sam. Compton Sue, heavy community, community contributor. Uh, Tom McGaughan is still back and still here with us. Glad to have you with us. And we just have Tons of stuff going on. I cannot believe how much you guys got going on here. I can scroll down and down and down and down and down and down forever. It's, it's, it's awesome. This is where I hang out outside of the regular show hours. So that's pcmtechhelp.com forward slash community. Don't miss out on all the fun that's going on over there. And don't miss their pre-show hangouts as well. So let's go ahead and get into your questions. Like I said, um, any questions, anything goes. You can basically ask me any question at any time in this. I knew it. <laughs> any question at any time, and you can come, and I will do my best to answer them. If I can't answer them, we will see what we can do about taking care of you at the community page. And if things go well, hopefully I'll be able to answer them for you. No questions are stupid. No bad questions. And don't hesitate to just start typing questions, because any comment you leave, any like you put on this video, any plus one you give, any share you do, every little thing helps. Of course, there's a donate button at the website as well. If you believe in the show, keeping it free forever and ever and ever and ever and ever, there's a donate button there, but donating money isn't everything. Just like what these guys are doing at the community, their time, their energy, having fun talking about tech is what this is all about. So check it out. All right, Holy Boy says, yo, 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 first. All right, good job, Holy Boy. Steve Wheeler says, hi, welcome back, Steve. B Hunter says, wow, starting early today. Yeah, I did start a little early, didn't I? I just couldn't help it. Tom Proke says, sup, Craig? Hey, Tom. Awesome tutorial. Nice work, by the way. Jay Ray says, hello. Hello, Jay. Hello, Russell. Um, 50 Zoc 50 says, where I live, it's already Friday. And where you live, I'm already jealous. <laughs> Compton Sue says, hi. Hey, Compton. Russell Adams says, still tinkering with Ubuntu. The pixelated video issue I mentioned continued after uninstalling and reinstalling Chrome. So I installed Chromium and everything is fine so far. So apparently there is now, according to Russell Adams, and it might not just be him, a known issue with Google Chrome and the Ubuntu, uh, the Ubuntu operating system, which is a Linux operating system. A couple of videos ago, I did an actual full-fledged tutorial on Ubuntu on how to install it. It's very easy to do on any computer. It's completely free because it's Linux, and it's the number one distribution as of last year. I don't know how long it's going to be that way, but it is very easy to use. For those of you who are scared about trying Linux, check out Ubuntu. It's a very good starter operating system for Linux, uh, for one of the Linux distributions. Russell says, now I will restart counting the days I can go without Windows. <laughs> yeah, it, it's a tough transition at first, to say the least. Linux isn't for everybody, Windows isn't for everybody, and Mac isn't for everybody. We talk about this a number of times in the show. A lot of people come in and ask, you know, Craig, what's better, Mac versus Windows versus PC versus... And, and many times it was like, well, what kind of person are you? It, most of the times it falls back on the personality type and what the application and what they're going to use it for is. So many people out there just don't even consider these things. They assume something's better just because it has a name on it, and that's never a good idea. But it's the way of the world. That's the way it is. That's the way people think. 
and that is always probably how it will be. Steve Wheeler says, only birds tweeted when I was young. <laughs> Good old Twitter, infamous Twitter, it's a nightmare. It can be a nightmare, depending on how you use it. I've seen people get very heavily involved in Twitter to a, Twitter to a sick, twisted, uh, disturbing degree, and it's harmed their lives personally. And I've seen people just use it and have a really good time with it and think it's hilarious. And then for the most of us, we don't get it most of the time. I finally got it. Once I joined Favstar, there's so many hilarious people on there. Uh, you, the problem is, is finding them most of the time, but Favstar helps with that. And that was one of the apps I discussed on my phone. Favstar is an awesome tool for people who are trying to find real human beings on Twitter that have good sense of humors, uh, similar ideas, similar thoughts, and things like that that they can connect with. I strongly recommend checking that service out. It's free, like any other Twitter service. Unless you give people trophies, then you have to pay their uh, pay like a premium membership for that. But uh, that's only if you really get into it. You know, it's not required. Holy boy, zero one nine seven eight zero. Team Viewer is good as well and free. Yes, I love Team Viewer. Actually, I've considered trying out Team Viewer on my desktops because I've noticed performance issues between my desktops from PC to PC over the internet. I do get quite a bit of lag through Log Me In. I was hoping going through Team Viewer would give me a improve an improved experience. I don't know if that's going to be true or not. I probably won't know until I try it. So hopefully I'll get some time next week to plug away at that, and I will get back at you guys and let you know if Team Viewer was worth it or not. But it's also uh, it also has a mobile app. Team Viewer does, so it's not restricted just to log me in, which was another free app. So J Ray says. Is next step or is today's version known as OpenStep? Is it still updated for today's star software? Have you tried it? OpenStep. I know this. Next step. Next step. Let's see what we got going on here. Object oriented multi uh, multitasking operating system developed by Next Computer. Hmm. OpenStep. Let's try OpenStep. I know what the object-oriented programming languages is. Is 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 specified open step. The object layers were open. Object-oriented programming is 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 a basic concept. It's not very complicated. Unfortunately, it's very difficult to grasp the first time around. Um, object-oriented programming, in a nutshell, the idea is that you create programmable objects that are like real-world objects. And like real-world objects, these programming objects have different attributes, classes, uh, well classes are actually a class of objects, have different classifications, I guess is the word I want to use, and they have different characteristics or methods for each class or each object. So you have classes, classes have multiple objects, objects have uh, attributes and multiple methods and things like that. And the idea is that you take an object like a real world object like a car and you say well what does a car have? And within, encompassed within that car is you know anything that would be associated with a car, the miles per gallon, uh, what kind of parts are in it, uh, the make, the make, the manufacturer, the year, that kind of thing, basic attributes. But then you say, well, what actions does a car perform? And then that those actions would be like a car drives, or drives forward, or drives reverse, or drives a distance. And then that would be action-based or methods of that car. And the whole idea is that you create an encompassed object that can be reused throughout the programming world. So you can actually create an object that has its own entity, its own creation, its own everything within a little encapsulated shell, so to speak, and then once you've actually created it, you can have a performance action and then you can destroy it at any time if you need to, or you can have them interact with other objects. Object-oriented programming really revolutionized the thought process of programming because it created a real um, tangible psychology for development of applications that people never really considered before. Uh, it looks like this open step in next computer that you were discussing with is a kind of a um, an operating system based on the object-oriented programming. Let me see what we got here. We have uh, early on, okay, as a result it created first libobject x which enabled them to port hippo drawn Unix systems running X windows without changing a single line of the app. After open step initiative became public, the next logical steps in so basically, they're, they're, I guess their philosophy was creating an object-oriented structure for building an operating system. It looks like the website's still active. It's still got a pandering of seven, which is pretty impressive. I couldn't tell you whether it's a very interesting idea. 
for those of you who don't know, it's called gnustep.org. It's kind of the philosophy behind it. Uh, that's the website that gives you the introduction and things like that. Uh, it says it's an object-oriented tool development kit, a graphical development kit. And it gra it's graphical because it's object-oriented. And, and it, object-oriented programming just really has kind of revolutionized programming in a lot of ways. And it's, it's an exciting concept, but it's very difficult to, to wrap your mind around it when you're first looking at it. Unless they start you with that, because a lot of times, a lot of, a lot of colleges will make the smart move and start with objects and things like that, but most of them still start with procedural languages like C++, and they're just not used as frequently. I would say C++ is more of an applications engineer or electrical engineering or uh, computer science major language, but if you're going more generalized IT or uh, informatics or anything that's basically like a specialized application of just technology in general, this procedural languages won't give you as much benefit as the upper level object-oriented languages will. Uh, and, and, and all of them are capable of it now, but uh, the big object-oriented languages, of course, are like Java, things like that are all object-oriented now. So it's a very cool thing that's going on in the programming world as well. Kevin Bragnan says... I'm addicted to Words with Friends. That game is crazy addictive. I can't help it. I do it all the time. I, I it's just I'm a, I can't help it. <laughs> J. Ray K says, "What other major OSs are there besides Windows, Mac, and Linux? Chromium is the new one. The new Chromium OS that includes in, it's included in Google Chrome. Um, I should know this question. I don't really know of many of them out there. I know there's a lot of. I mean, you got DOS." Uh, any kind of command prompt based operating system, but even Linux now is a command prompt operating system. You can do it either way, however you want to do it. But uh, I can't really, off the top of my head, I can't think of anything outside the major three players. Nobody's really trying to compete from the looks of it. Probably too difficult. It's a hard market to break into. Pcom Fun Fan 97. Hello, Craig. Great apps. Yeah, it's taken me a while to collect them. I like them. They're, some of them are kind of boring, but they're awesome. Holy boy, 019780, is there a remote for PlayStation 3? I'm almost positive there's a remote for PlayStation 3, but the problem is you have to get the special receiver, the Bluetooth receiver for the PlayStation 3. I believe you have to get a completely separate one. I don't think you can get one that's built into the actual PlayStation 3. It's the same. It's not the same for Xbox. It does it over Wi-Fi for Xbox. So actually I get uh, the wireless app and the Google Glass is the one that works for that. Tom Proke says, what kind of camera do you use? No lag. What makes webcam lag besides being a cheap device? I'm using a HD, it's a Microsoft HD Life Cam, I believe. Let me see what we got here. It's Life Cam. I want to give you the exact models. I, I, I hated it at first. And then I started to like it, and then I started to hate it again, and then I started to like it again. But uh, it's my cheap one. I haven't set up my expensive one yet. But uh, LifeCam Studio is all it says. LifeCam Studio. I don't think that there's anything other than that. I think that's all it is. The Microsoft LifeCam Studio HD camera it cost me $99. And the quality is quite superb. Sorry about that. That was me. Uh, the quality is quite superb for the price. I mean, I'm not really investing in high-end equipment here, so I have to record my audio separate. But uh, the LifeCam Studio is, is quite exceptional with what it's able to capture in full HD. Uh, just unfortunately, you guys can't see it because uh, Google Plus doesn't broadcast in HD, but it's definitely worth looking into. Another great one, uh, or another few great ones to look into are the higher end, anything over $70 or $80 uh, Logitech uh, webcams. Just go to their website, Logitech. Very cost effective, amazing picture. But again, you could use the embedded audio, but I usually capture audio separately. For my audio setup, I use the Blue Snowball microphone. It cost me $100. It's USB, and I think the quality on that is quite amazing as well. So, I mean, really, everything's kind of evolving here in the show, and when I decide to go HD for the live stream, I'm going to bring in my, my higher-end camera, which I can't even... It's so sad, I can't even remember what it is. <laughs> my camera guy has it. He hangs on to it. Uh, but... Um, I'm going to bring that in, and I'm actually going to bring in analog audio as well. So we're going to make some major changes to the actual video quality when we make that shift, and it just makes sense. So, but you can do real cost-effective high-end solutions for your computers. It's it's video now. It's like amazing how cheap it's gotten. I can't believe it. Good question. J. Ray K says you should have a wireless mouse app, fun to use and great for drawing. Wireless mouse app would be awesome just to mess with people. I, would, I could totally see myself at my desk at work just taking over a, a co-worker's mouse and just 
<laughs> just messing with them. That's actually a cool idea. I think I might try that. Great suggestion, J. Ray. I love it. Pecan Fun Fan 97 says, Hey, Craig, watch this video on to YouTube. You will be amazed. Search McLaren P1 app. Click the first video. I'm going to have to wait on that one. I'm going to tell you what, Pecan. You've, had, you've been a reliable source, but post that video in the community page, and we will all check it out and leave our own comments on it, because I want to be amazed, unless it's offensive. Then definitely post it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so do that. Post it for everybody to see, not just me, everybody to see. J. Ray K. says, how to fix a computer that critical stops when you boot. It shows one minute left until shutdown each time to boot. It says services.exe on handled exception. This is an excellent question, Jay. It's telling you that you have to wait a minute, or it will in one minute, shut down each time you boot it up. And of course, the first question I have to ask you is, have you tried to boot in safe mode rather than standard mode? Because anything that actually puts a one-minute countdown timer on your shutdown screams virus to me. Typically, there's not a built-in timer for issues that are actually errors. Uh, usually, it's something that's actually, if it's an actual error in your system, it doesn't let you wait around until it shuts down. So uh, I haven't seen that one in particular. I've been fixing computers for like four to eight years. But try to boot in safe mode. That's the first thing you got to do and see if it still repeats itself. You may be looking at a corruption in a particular uh, service on your operating system. And in that case, we need a little more details on your on-handled service exception. Sometimes they give you an error code or something like that. Uh, and there's also a Windows log, an error log, in your device manager. If you go to your desktop, right-click on computer, select manage. Uh, this is for Windows 7, by the way. You can go to Event Viewer, and you can go down to Windows Logs, and you can actually check your application, security, setup, system, and all those error messages. So hopefully you can boot in safe mode and at least get to that point, and you'll be able to kind of get some more information on what is occurring. But you're in research mode right now, essentially. If you can't figure it out based on the limited information you have, you may have to start resorting to booting it on a separate uh, computer and running a virus scan. Sometimes you can... Just pull out the hard drive for the computer, stick it in another computer as a secondary drive, and then run a virus scan on it uh, whenever you get a chance. That's another uh, way that I've gotten away with getting rid of some infections on computers that I couldn't boot up anymore. Just a few options. Glenn Taylor says, what's the safest and easy way, easiest way to migrate my Windows 7 OS 32-bit and data to Windows 7 64-bit system? I would like to keep all software. I have an Intel DH55HC MB with Core i7 processor and 4 gigabytes of RAM. Glenn Taylor, welcome to the show. Great question, first of all, and I really appreciate you stopping by. Now, hopefully you've, you've noticed that I'm kind of buttering you up a little bit here because I got bad news for you. Uh, the 32-bit transition to 64-bit doesn't give you the actual option to do an upgrade. So you are going to be resorted to actually doing a clean install of your operating system. But don't freak out just yet, okay? You need to back up all of your critical system data onto a CD, DVD, or drive, all right? As for keeping all the software, you need to, keep an, you need to collect an inventory of what software you need to keep. In other words, just go to your control panel, add, remove programs, see what programs you have installed, and then make sure you have access to the disks and or licenses for that software. In many, many, many cases, you can get a downloadable version of that software right on Google. I've had to do this before. So basically, you're kind of stuck in a position where they stuck you with 32-bit. Now you need to migrate to 64. The safest and easiest way to do that is just to make sure you do some homework beforehand get all of your critical data that's in your My Document libraries and all that onto some kind of external medium, and then, which you should do anyway, and then take a software inventory of all the software installed in your machine, find out what software you're gonna, gonna have, find what software you, you're not gonna be able to re reinstall and download, and then find out what software you don't have licenses for anymore, and you can usually call those companies if it's an expensive piece of software and get some kind of a recovery license or recovery download for it, but don't wait until after you formatted your old system to call them, because a lot of times they verify the information right on the software. But that is an excellent question, Glenn, and, and you've probably come to me because I'm you're hoping for a unique uh, fix or workaround to the problem, and most people have already told you that there isn't one, and really there isn't 
a, bit, a real good one that I can recommend to you. And it's very unfortunate. I wish I could help. If you need help doing all the backups and things like that, do join the community. Or if you need help finding downloads, we'll see if we can uh, help track some down for you as well. But feel free to jump into the community, pcmtechhelp.com forward slash community. Completely free. And uh, hopefully we can try to take care of you on that front. So sorry I don't have better news, but uh, thanks for coming. Excellent question. I hope you don't, I hope you don't go away. <laughs> 50, Zoc 50. Today I lost all my files and software on my computer. Sad day. Yep, see, that sucks. That's why I talked about Google Drive, my app on my phone. If you do that, that's another great suggestion. When I say backup to an external medium, this counts. Go to google.com slash drive, and you can actually, look at that. Uh, you, can you see that? Hopefully you can see that. Hang on, I, I can't, I got to see here. I got this right here. Yeah, right here. Right, right there, right there. Google Drive, okay? I got that in the bottom right-hand corner of my screen. Google Drive, right there, okay? Google Drive has a PC app that will synchronize your files to it. So what you could do, theoretically, without getting an external drive or an external flash drive or CD, you could download Google Drive and dump all your critical data on it. It gives you 5 gigabytes for free, but I upgraded to 200 for like $10 a month. So it's not like you have to pay a trash load of money to get more space. So you can dump all of your critical system data on that as well, and then when you get your new computer set up, just log back in and install Google Drive, and you can pull your data right back off of that Google Drive onto your computer and synchronize it for you. So that's another awesome way to kind of transfer information without having to worry about external software. You should be doing that anyway. It backs it up. It's good stuff. You too, 50 Zoc 50. Get set up on Google Drive so it doesn't happen again. Holy boy, 019780 works great. I remote with my iPod. I Pod. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of remote controls with uh, within the within the built-in. There's got to be one for PlayStation 3. I can't I can't believe there's not one. Tom Proak says, "How can I get a live feed of this show on my Android phone?" Gingerbread. I don't think live feeds are supported yet by uh, the majority of devices on Android. It's unfortunate, uh, and that's a Google thing. They will not let you play it. It's frustrating. Let me see if I can actually do it on mine. Uh, it doesn't look like it's playing on mine either. I thought it did though. On my iPhone. Oh, yep. It, it will play on my iPhone. So now I'm looking at myself, talking about myself, looking at myself. Whoa. Paradox. That's scary. But uh, it does work on the iPhone. I don't know for sure a way to do it yet on the Android. You could try downloading a different browser, maybe Chrome or something. Maybe it will render, render it properly. But uh, it's really it's a Google thing more than anything else, whether they will allow you to do the broadcast straight onto your phone. Holy Boy says... Find iPhone is awesome. Locate your Apple device anywhere as long as it's connected to a network. That is a good one. And where's my iPhone? Where's my Droid? Those phone apps are awesome as well. Or GPS my Droid, GPS my Android. It allows you to send a text message remotely to it. It'll ping you back the location and a map of where you can find it. I've actually had people get saved doing that. Not like alive, but their phone's getting saved doing that. It's really a cool... Uh, a cool way to actually keep track of your phone if something gets lost. Actually, I better make sure I get that back on here. I had that on my Android. I forgot about it for my iPhone. Not a good thing. Holy Boy says, do you know of a good free text editor? I just use Notes thus far. Text editor, um, I just use Notebook. Uh, I'm, I, I'm old school on that. I don't. It depends on what you're doing because I, I know there's a lot of development environments that are text-based. So if I'm doing like programming, I'll actually use a development environment like Eclipse or something like that, because it'll actually create a, a development environment revolved around whatever I will uh, whatever I will be programming in. Let me see if I can find the name of it. Eclipse. Eclipse is for sure, yep, open source community website. Eclipse is one of them, and then there's another one. Um, it's essentially, what it is, is it's, it's a development tool, okay? Let, let's say we talk about Eclipse for a little bit. If I go to Eclipse's website, eclipse.org forward slash download, I get a list of software here depending on the type of programmer I am, okay? And then I have Eclipse IDE for Java developers, Eclipse for Java and C++ developers, Eclipse for C and C++, Eclipse for mobile developers, Eclipse for Java and DSL developers, Eclipse modeling tools, and you can really kind of download these extra packages if you download just the base Eclipse package for specific programming type like HTML, web development, and all them as well. And so what you're doing is, is you're downloading a text development environment that will actually let you customize the environment to whatever your programming style is. And that was the theory and, and philosophy behind Eclipse, and it's really become a rage 
in the process because of what it's been able to do. I know Ruby programmers love it. A buddy of mine out in California uses it. And uh, it's a very exciting software package for people who like to do kind of development. But if you're talking general notepads, I just use Notepad. I don't use anything special. I really don't. I've just I've gotten accustomed to it. It's very easy to pull up. It's very easy to save. It's very lightweight. It's very fast. Gets my job done. So that's why I've just used it historically. J. Ray K said, as said in community, people can make a supercomputer with their already bought PS3 and computer. Priceless way to get power when you don't have the money for more equipment. If you have a PlayStation 3 lying around, that's a great way to take advantage of a piece of hardware you don't use anymore. Assuming you don't want to use your PS3 anymore, but uh, that's kind of a really cool concept because um, well, it sounds to me like you're, you're paralleling your PS3 with your computer, so maybe you can do both. That's interesting. I'm going to have to check that out. I missed that one in the community. Can you tell I wasn't at the <laughs> wasn't in my web my computer at all today? <laughs> it's unfortunate. Holy boy says file spirit is great, Craig. Access all of your desktop from your iPhone. Another great app for doing that. File spirit. Check that one out, people. Good recommendation. Glenn Taylor says, I would like to keep all software. I have an Intel DH uh, with Core i7. This megabyte can support up to six motherboard can support up to 16 gigabytes. Like I said, Glenn, I, I wish I had better news for you. There's just not a whole lot you can do for 36 to 64, 32 to 64 bit transition, other than do a full wipe and reinstall. Uh, the only thing I can do is ease your pain of transition. And if you want to keep all your software, like I said, it, you, you, there's just no good way to do it. There's just not. Uh, I mean, you could configure a dual boot system, but then you would have to run 32-bit anytime you wanted to use the older software packages. Then you'd have to, to boot the other operating system anytime you wanted to run the, the new software packages. And it, and it can become real tedious to do that for the same operating system. Holy Boy says, LinkedIn is a good business social network. I've heard that. I've done some stuff on LinkedIn, not a whole lot. I do find it very engaging. In other words, people interact with each other a lot more on LinkedIn. So that's kind of a cool thing about LinkedIn. Uh, but the interface has always kind of bugged me. But obviously I'm not the only one. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm the only one or I'm one of the few because a lot of people still love LinkedIn and use it all the time. So Holy Boy says Quick Office is good. I love Quick Office as well. Like you said, it's not free though. That's one of the downsides. Peacom Fun Fan 97 says to have HD on your video, Craig, you can go to twitch.tv and broadcast from there. I'm actually probably going to do livecast.com. That's probably what I'm going to do if I do take that switch. So, uh, it, But it, it's just one of those things where it just integrates so well with YouTube. Like As soon as this broadcast is over, it gets instantly uploaded to YouTube, and then it gets instantly distributed to all my subscribers, and then they're instantly made aware of it, and it's just an awesome, awesome thing that's going on here. Um, J. Ray K. says, try that now. I'll get more info. <clears throat> Russell Adams says, Sorry, I missed your response to my post. Was upstairs dealing with a domestic issue? Yes, I'm stuck in the basement too. The basement is where a lot of magic happens. Hmm, that came off a lot more creepy than it did in my head. Sorry about that. Peak on Fun Fan 97 says, okay, it's on the community page. Enjoy. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Let me see. I want to witness it. I'm going to witness for myself. Let's see what we got here. Is it a community page? What's that? I want to see it. I want to see it on the community. Oh, there it is. The new McLaren app. Pretty sweet. So it says. I'm going to have to check that out. I'm pretty excited. I'm going to have to check that one out. Thank you for sharing it, Pecom Fun Fan. I always like when you guys share stuff. Very awesome. J. Ray K says, as if I forgot about safe mode, Facebook. <laughs> the air doesn't show up anymore. Oh, it stopped. It went away. So you got to check the air logs. It's the only other thing you can do. Um, and hey, don't get offended if I tell you to do safe mode. It's the first suggestion I've got to make. I don't know everyone's experiment, experience level by heart, so uh, I have to make that suggestion because it's really the easiest way to get bypassed any kind of viruses or anything like, like that. So don't get offended if I make a suggestion. I'm not trying to make you feel dumb or say you're dumb, uh, but uh, if the air doesn't show up anymore, you got to check the logs. So the only way, you got to find the timestamp in the air logs and find out when the air occurred, and you got to give me an error message or something so that we have something to work with uh, so that we can do a little more research. Holy Boy says, Glenn, remember that 64-bit may not run some older programs. Take caution. Now, this is true to a degree. Uh, a lot of the 64-bit operating systems now, though, have 32-bit 
emulation. 32-bit emulation will allow you to run a lot of the modern 32-bit uh, software packages on 64-bit, but drivers are always a big issue, so make sure that your computer has 64-bit drivers available for it. But I'm guessing if his motherboard supports 16 gigabytes of memory and he's got that kind of i7 processor, it probably supports 64-bit uh, 64-bit uh, drivers. So, uh, but it's something to consider. But I've had a lot more issues with 64-bit drivers than I have had with 32-bit drivers. So, something to think about. Something to consider. Something to think about. I don't say that enough. We don't say that enough around here. Oh, okay. J Ray says the air doesn't show up anymore in safe mode. I'm getting Avis. Zone alarm is too slow for my computer. Do you think it will fix the problem? Zone alarm, I would remove just for now, and I would install, uh, I would run the ESET NOD32 online scanner. It's at my website. It's a free virus scanning utility. It's a great tool. It's called the NOD32 scanning tool. It's at my website, pcmtechhelp.com forward slash downloads. Download the updates for that in safe mode, run a full scan, and then make sure you've downloaded Malwarebytes anti-malware from my website as well, completely free, both of these. Download the definitions for that, run a complete scan of that, Make sure you've removed every little nasty that you can possibly come up with, but still make sure you check your error logs because that's your best friend. Because if it's a Windows error, it might not be virus related. So that's a good plan of action that at least keep you busy for a few hours. Holy boy, 019780 says, sorry, I was talking about TeamViewer. I remote with iPod. Oh yeah. TeamViewer is awesome. I see what you mean. I remote. I thought you meant remote control. Did you, still, did you see them? I'm going to go wait. No, but seriously. Team Viewer is awesome. I love it. And uh, definitely worth checking out. I'm all about it. Kevin Braggon says, HTC Evo watching on my phone live. Hey, see? Some Android ones support it. What browser are you using, Kevin? That'd be a good question. 50 Zoc 50. How do I prevent my OS from getting corrupted? I have Windows 8. Really? There's no real good way to prevent corruption. Corruption can inevitably happen as a result of many, many, many things. Typically, you just want to make sure you have some kind of a backup method in place. That's a more important issue to resolve. You can run the 3 2 1 backup procedure, which is what I recommend. And I'm not the only one who recommends it, it's pretty much anybody in the IT world. You want three copies of your data somewhere, two of them you want physically within a physical proximity to you. In other words, you have one on a local hard drive and one on an external drive, and maybe one on another external drive somewhere. Mirrored, as in two separate physical locations at least, minimum. And you want one of those backups off-site, just in case your house burns down. And that's the three, two, one black backup procedure. Definitely worth considering if you have anything that's critical, and you can do it very cost-effectively now with an application like Google Drive. For example, Google Drive right now I have on an external drive, so my data is on this external drive as well. But I also synchronize this Google Drive with a physical computer at work. And so that drive's actually got an exact replica of this data as well. And then this data is also physically uploaded to the cloud. So I have three copies of my data. I also have, of course, my cloud copy on my phone. If I decide I need another backup, I can actually download a local copy of certain files right to this phone. So there's a lot of things you can do now with the cloud services that really haven't been available in the past, but there's really no great way to prevent corruption other than making sure you're very secure, have a good antivirus or a decent one. NOD32 is great for paid. Uh, Avast, I did a video on it a few days ago. It's at my website, pcmtechhelp.com forward slash downloads, and Avast will give you great protection for free. But of course, said it a million times, even in the community, what's the best antivirus, people? You are. The best antivirus is you, the user. You are the best antivirus available on the market today, completely free. Just make sure you're paying very close attention to the things you're downloading and looking at. Only way to protect yourself from threats, the only true way, is to be smart. Be smart. But uh, there's no way to always prevent corruption because hard drives can fail, hardware can fail, things can start on fire randomly, burst into flames. Explosions occur, meteor might fall out of the sky. You never know what's going to happen. Something can always happen that will thwart your plan for not corrupting your data. So it does happen. J. Ray K says, is there a software that realistically speeds up your computer like drastically? 
not a single software package. There's some of them that do a decent job uh, of advanced system care, which is at my website in the download section. Uh, it's free, and it will actually do a full tuning of your system. It'll also let you choose a tuning profile, which will actually load all the best registry values and configurations and Windows settings for your particular system. That does a really good job. It also has really good cleaning tools and optimization tools built right into it. Completely free. The pro version has different profiles you can work with, which is also kind of nice. Uh, but other than uh, advanced system care, I can't really recommend anything out of that that I would, I would really comfortably say will give you a decent performance boost. It's going to be a combination of a lot of things. As you've seen in my video, Jay, um, I do these video tutorials on how to optimize your Windows operating system, and they're 20, 30 videos long, and they're really short videos, but they're not really using one software package. It's using a collection of strategies that, at the end of the day, make you get the most out of your machine. So that's why I, I push at that. So, Holy Boy says, what's a good website for tips on programming? Well, it depends on the language. Somebody at the community posted the other day, it was a Visual Basic programming language. It was for Microsoft. Um, it's like a Visual Basic for beginners. I can't remember what it was called. Uh, but that'll get, that's a great way to get your feet wet in the programming world. Uh, Visual Basic for, here, let's do Visual. It's called Visual something. Visual Studio? Oh, learn Visual Basic. What was it called? It was from Compton, Sue. I know that. VB Tutor. There's so many websites out there. Microsoft Visual Basic. If you're doing web development, you obviously want to do W3 Schools. That's one of my big, big, big recommendations for that. Uh, but Visual Basic, uh, you can learn that right at Microsoft's website in your development environment. That's a real popular way, actually, to learn any kind of programming languages. Go straight through the developer. Become part of the community. That's one of the most critical things you can do, actually, for getting into any programming language. But you've got to start somewhere. But uh, you can get Visual Basic in Visual Studio uh, for free now. they got uh, Visual Basic free editions and things like that. Visual Basic is a fun language to start out with because it's visual. And so you actually start out with creating the user interface, and then you can actually go into the coding elements of it once you've gotten outside of the actual visual aspects of it. So now they've actually branched out to Visual C++, Visual C Sharp, and Visual F Sharp, and all them fun things as well. So, well, we have reached the question roundup segment of Thursday night's show. Now, remember, this is the PCM Tech Help Show, the show dedicated to you, my subscribers. In the question roundup segment, what I do is I attempt to answer the rest of the questions, which doesn't look like there's many, but that's cool, and I will do my best to answer them to the best of my ability for the last five minutes of the show. If I can't answer them, I will recommend you go to the community, pcmtechhelp.com forward slash community, and at the community page, that's where I live outside of here, and all my awesome community members will be more than happy to give you guidance, advice, and help or whatever computer concern you might have, from beginner to noob sauce to newbie noob sauce, all the way up to I'm a genius and smarter than all of you. Because if you're that smart, we want you there too, because we want to learn something from you. Because that's what we're all about here is learning new stuff, checking out new things, and having fun. Also, don't forget to check out the website, pcmtechhelp.com. I have tons of free downloads there at pcmtechhelp.com forward slash downloads. Also, you can check out the YouTube channel at pcmtechhelp.com forward slash YouTube where I have over 450 free video tutorials. And subscribe to this channel before you leave and like the video. So let's get started on the question roundup. I think you skipped the flag app on your phone. What was that one? The flag app. Flag app? Flag app. Flag app. Flag app? Flag app. I see no... F oh, that was Google Pages. That's what that was. Google Pages. That will actually let my, no, Facebook pages, I'm sorry. That will actually let me manage my Facebook pages uh, that I have for the show. So like me on Facebook. <laughs> That's on there. So B Hunter says, can you do live stream with your new app you tested out on your iPhone the other day? That was really good video quality. Unfortunately, we can't uh, be Beat Hunter, but I am going to have to migrate to higher quality. I'm, I'm kind of learning that daily, daily, daily. Uh, if I want to keep growing, uh, it's going to have to be something I definitely do, and I will do that as soon as I can. Right now I'm doing lots of startups at work, have lots of overtime, and I just don't have time. But we are going to move into the high definition at some point. I'm hoping it'll be sooner rather than later. But no, the YouTube Capture app will only let you record and upload directly. Unfortunately. Skitsmix100 says, Team Viewer's really good. Welcome to the show, Skitsmix. Glad you're here. And I'm glad you recommend Team Viewer as well. I love Team Viewer. It is an awesome, awesome time. 50Zoc50 50 50 says, Is there a plug that turns an internal... 
internal desktop hard drive into an external hard drive? Excellent question. It's called an external enclosure, and you can find them anywhere that need, anywhere now that devices are sold. I recommend Newegg.com, and it's called a basically you want to look for an external hard drive enclosure. You can turn an internal two and a half inch or internal standard desktop uh, hard drive right into an external drive by taking this external enclosure for ten fifteen dollars, sliding your drive into it into a little slot, and it'll convert it into USB to plug into your computer. Amazing tool for recovering data and an amazing tool for getting a little bit more extra time and power out of that extra hard drive you have that you're just not using anymore. And if you have any questions about the type of drive you're looking for, just go to the website community, post, say, hey, I need a decent three and a half inch external drive enclosure. Craig said I need to ask you people and those people, I guarantee you, will be more than happy to help you out because those people are my people. <laughs> and my people take care of you people. If my people don't take care of you people, then you better tell me that my people aren't taking care of you people. Because then my people are going to become dead people. <laughs> yes, that's a threat. No, I'm just kidding. Russell Adams says, at midnight tonight, I've made it one whole day without using Windows. I know that's probably not a big thing, most of you, but it's a milestone for me. Congratulations, Russell. I'm glad you're experimenting and branching out a little bit. It's very exciting, very frustrating, but you will learn an immense amount on how flexible or patient you are. Tom Proke says, how do you keep your wife upstairs? Oh, we have a negotiated agreement and it's in contract and writing and uh, uh, and I do make money doing this, so that helps. <laughs> so, but uh, it's only for an hour, four days a week. I guess that is a lot. So she's awesome. What can I say? Pecan Fun Fan 97 says, Craig, good night and have a nice weekend. Don't forget to watch the video I post in the community. I will not forget. Thanks for coming by, Pecan. I always like having you out. Jay Ray says, what about an app to make your iPhone work as a webcam? There is a Ustream app that will let you stream wirelessly to Ustream, which I don't even think they have free accounts anymore. Um, uh, you can also use Skype as a webcam. That's probably one of the most popular ways to do it. You just pull up a Skype app, and you can actually just talk to whoever you want to talk to uh, directly. And that's pretty much how that works. It's not that difficult. Uh, so I don't really know outside of those two what else you could possibly use unless you mean – it's not so much the camera that's my problem, if that's what you're asking. I have a full 1080p HD camera that I'm looking at right now. It's the fact that they won't let me stream it wirelessly. So, but I'm sure there's a way, I don't know, I think I know what you mean. Like if I could just plug in a USB cable here and actually be able to use my phone as a webcam, that's kind of a cool idea. I want somebody at the community to find that for me. Find that for me, show me. I want to, I want to, I want to be able to do that, and I want to show it at the next video. I want to be able to show me my, my webcam caught on my camera. That would be awesome. And I could stream with it, but it wouldn't let me stream in HD because Google downgrades my quality. As soon as I stream, like right now I'm streaming in HD on my computer, but it downgrades as soon as it hits YouTube. Pecan Fun Fan says, ha ha Tom, good one, who knows? It's a mystery wrapped in an enigma. Very awesome, very awesome. Russell Adams says, oh, I like the idea of converting internal to external hard drive. I have a few around with data that I want to get off of them. I'm telling you, it's the greatest thing you can do because you can actually just pull out and pull it in a new one, pull out, put in a new one. Every IT and field service tech has at least two of these. They have one for the small and one for the large. Just so when you're in the field, you can instantly convert a bad drive or a drive having issues into an external, plug it into your USB port, and pull data off of it. It's a lifesaver, and it's very easy to do, and they only cost 10 20 bucks. Awesome. Like work as a driver. Yeah, Jay, I was a little confused by that, but uh, I don't know. That's why I'm asking the community. Somebody find out how to stream with a webcam uh, with their phones. Use their web phone as a webcam. Uh, there's got to be a way to do it. I, I haven't had a chance to look into it yet, but I want to know if it's possible. As always, thanks for thank you all for stopping by. We have reached the 10 p.m. mark. It is Thursday, so I will see you guys on Monday or very, very soon at the community because that's where I hang out outside of the show. That's where we all hang out outside of the show pcmtechhelp.com forward slash community and don't hesitate to swing by and see what we got going on over there because we're always having a good time. And today, man, they really impressed me with the amount of content they were putting out there. It was, it was amazing. It took me like a half hour just to catch up with what was going on. So as always, have yourself a wonderful day and I will see you guys on Monday.